Welcome to another edition of Discover Tinley, where we highlight the people and organizations in town that make Tinley Park a great place in which to live. And as we all know, Tinley Park is a pretty great place in which to live. Uh, my name is Ron Santani. I'll be your host tonight uh, for the program. And as always, our program is brought to you through the volunteer services of the Community Resources Commission and also our high school, college, adult, grad. We have all kinds of volunteers helping us out. Uh, producing this program every month so we thank them for for coming out a lot of things go into making these programs possible uh stuff going on in uh, tinley park this summer uh block party coming up july 15th so if you see this beginning of the month uh come out to that big block party every year and it's quite a quite an occasion to see uh, what's going on big car show uh, i kind of like the car shows uh and then in august there's a night out so kind of Look for uh, uh, music in the plaza, music on the uh, in downtown. You got movies, you got all kinds of things going on in Tinley Park. So check out TinleyPark.org and other places for what's going on. A lot of entertainment going on in Tinley Park this summer. Uh, things are happening all over the place, and we have a lot of organizations in town that do a lot of good for people. They like to serve people and help people. And and organize organization that came about in Tinley Park. A few years ago when we had them on uh, just starting out we're gonna have a little update from love inc uh of course and i'll show them, we'll mention what love inc means we got kim sullivan the executive director of love inc thank you Welcome so much for having me thank you uh, thank you yeah okay now for let's get out of the way love inc is love inc is actually an acronym for love in the name of christ um, a lot of times people think it's Love Incorporated, and it kind of makes sense because we do incorporate a lot of different churches and ministries, but actually it is an acronym for Love in the Name of Christ. Very appropriate. That's good. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what, what, what is Love Inc. all about? What's your scope and what kind of things are you trying to do for the people in, around the area, South Suburban area? Well, our mission is to mobilize the local church to transform lives and communities in the name of Christ. Uh, recently, we've really been working on what our individual uh, affiliates mission or vision is. Uh, there are over 150 affiliates of Love in the Name of Christ all over the country. No, Some this people is not don't just know a that. local place. No, this no, is, it's oh. a national, uh, actually an international organization. Oh. We have several locations in Kenya as oh. well. But um, each affiliate kind of has to have their own vision, what they're trying to accomplish on their own. And um, we can't really borrow that from somewhere else. For instance, mm -hmm. one of the Alaska affiliates has a roadkill ministry. Probably not okay. going to work around here. <laughs> well, we might have a few things around like that, not quite as much. Yeah, or uh, there's a few in um, Michigan, for example, that have a um, a wood, a firewood ministry. And again, there wouldn't be a lot of need for something like that. So when you're trying to figure out what your own affiliate or what your own ministry is going to do, it's very geographical um, in in the scope. And so one thing that we have discovered although I do think this is probably a national problem, but one thing that we have discovered that we could be an answer to in the Tinley Park area is uh, helping people build relationships again. You know, people are more connected than ever, but maybe mm -hmm. less... Um, Not in a good way, I think, sometimes. <laughs> I, I think so, too. It may be more lonely than ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so our vision is to fan the flames of a relational revival in the greater Tinley Park area. And so that goes for people who are uh, under some kind of financial duress, but it also goes just for the shut-in who maybe doesn't have anybody to visit them. And maybe the high schooler who um, always has their face in front of some kind mm -hmm. of a screen mm -hmm. and needs to also learn how to be more face-to-face -face social. So kind of connecting those two groups of people together, um, the people who are at home and lonely, and the people who maybe need to improve some of their face-to-face -face social skills. Wow. Well, what are some of your programs you have that helps uh, promote some of those things? Well, we have lots of things. Um, first of all, we have 18 partner churches. Uh, when we first yeah. uh, started, we only had eight. Mm. So um, we're continuing to grow. And in fact, we've also increased our um, area, our geographical area that we service since the last time we've been on. So uh, we kind of have a bigger pool of volunteers to pull from because we do get our volunteers from our partner churches. So we serve uh, Tinley Park, Orland Park, Orland Hills, mm -hmm. Country Club Hills, Oak Forest, mm -hmm. um, Matson, and we just added uh, New Lenox, Mokina, and Frankfurt. So basically we're wow. Tinley Park, 
and the surrounding areas. Everything wow. that touches uh, Tinley is also included. And um, so what we do is when we get a new partner church, uh, we kind of go to that church and we ask them, what's your vision for the community? Mm -hmm. And how can we help you accomplish that vision for the community? Mm -hmm. um, so it's really hard to say specifically what we do because it kind of depends on mm -hmm. what our partner churches are looking oh. to do. But what some of those churches are doing is we have two um, personal care pantries. We have one here in Tinley Park. Family Harvest Church uh, does that. And it's a monthly personal care pantry that uh, solely uh, reaches out to Love Inc. clients. We do have quite a rigorous uh, intake process uh, just to kind of verify the need um, before we meet needs. And so that's why we make it uh, not open to the public, but by appointment only. Um, so they have been uh, open for five years now, that particular personal care pantry. We just opened one in Orland as well. Uh, we have Beds and Blessings which provides beds and bedding oh uh, for families who are in need. And that is provided by Faith Christian Reformed Church on 171st Street, which is actually the church that brought Love Inc. to the, our community. Oh. So, um, and they also have a community garden at Ooh. that church. Um, and they actually, in the month of July, will be hosting a crock pot cooking class. Uh, I just had a, a single mom who, um, is in dire and desperate financial need as well as relational. She has no family mm -hmm. um, and really struggling to make ends meet. Tell me that she never cooks because um, nobody ever never taught cooks. her. Never cooks. What so you she can imagine do? what that's doing with her budget. Wow. You know, what, what that's doing with her health. She, she, she I guess they eat stuff. out all the time. Oh, they eat out all the time? Oh my goodness. So you can see there's an opportunity there to mentor her yeah. uh, with her budget. Mm. Um, and something like this crock pot cooking class, she does work. So if we can show her, hey, it's easy to make a healthy meal, mm. you can stick it in the crock pot in the morning. And when you get home from work, it's ready. And at the same time, you're building relationships mm. with uh, these uh, ladies and gentlemen in the church who are teaching the class. Mm. They're having a meal together afterwards, oh. uh, made in a crock pot. Okay. And um, so it kind of serves several different, meets several different needs um, in just one class, you know, teaching them how to cook, teaching them maybe a little bit about uh, spending their finances a little bit more wisely. Mm. Um, and then building relationships. Wow. Um, let me see. We have. I saw. You, I read in your thing a couple of your thing called the Gap Ministry, mm -hmm. the uh, Clearinghouse Call Center, Transformational Life. So, what are those things? Well, Gap Ministries, like the two personal care pantries, those would be considered oh. Gap Ministries. Okay. And basically, what that means is that um, through our relationships with other. Uh, organizations with other churches we listen and to our clients we listen to maybe some needs that are in the community that are not either not being currently met or that the existing organizations are completely overwhelmed with mm -hmm. that's how the personal care pantry came to be because a lot of our food pantry people only have um, personal care items hit and miss mm -hmm. sometimes they have them sometimes mm -hmm. they don't and actually um, that came from a conversation with an employee at Together We Cope years ago. They were the ones that suggested that for us. So um, we also work with not only churches, but with the uh, existing uh, community organizations that are around. And we don't want to duplicate their services. Yeah, Instead, yeah. we want to find out where the church, uh, meaning not one specific church, but all the churches together in this community can maybe meet some of those gaps. Mm -hmm. And then transformational life classes, um, those are classes because we are really committed to giving a hand up and not a hand out. Um, we are not interested in having the same person come to all of our gap ministries for a lifetime okay. unless there's, I mean, of course, there's some extenuating circumstances mm -hmm. where that might happen. But we want to make sure that we provide life skills and different uh, pieces of education. Um, like this young lady who doesn't know how to cook. Uh, that same young lady came to me 
and asked me if I could teach her how to wrap presents because nobody's ever showed her how to oh how to wrap a present. So you can see how some people just have not had the relationships in order mm. to have normal life skills. Mm. And uh, we believe that there are plenty of people in churches who maybe aren't very good with children and maybe they don't sing so they don't see themselves as your typical church volunteer. Mm. But they might know how to wrap a present. Be good. You know. Speaking of volunteers, you you could use volunteers. Uh, we right? can. We good. can. We have sixty volunteers oh, currently. Wow. We have all kinds of ways that they can volunteer. We have office work. Um, we have uh, you know gap ministries. Uh, we have we need teachers. Uh, we need child care workers. Of course, we always do a background background check and stuff yeah. like that with our child care workers. Um, we also have com need committee members for mm -hmm. fundraising uh, teams and, and, and different things that we're planning, events. Um, so just all kinds of, and then just random things. Sometimes we'll need somebody to cut somebody's hair mm -hmm. or um, to take somebody shopping for shoes. So um, we, pretty much you name it, we can use it. If, if wow. you like to knit, we could probably find some way that you can help the community with, through your knitting. <laughs> wow. Okay. You talked about financially. What's your financial support? What where are you getting that from? Well, our partner churches. Uh, we do ask them to give contribute in some way, although we do not have a specific amount for them to to contribute. Uh, we believe that as we uh, prove our value to them. Um, that that they will uh, gladly be able to to support us because one of the things that we didn't talk about is our clearinghouse and that is probably the biggest service that we have for our churches and basically what that means is that our partner churches can have the confidence in knowing that because each of them send us their people either from their church or the people who are passing through their church asking for help if they send them all to us then we're making sure that duplication of services isn't happening. Mm. So somebody's not going to the Baptist church, the Methodist church, and the oh, Catholic church oh. for the same electric bill. Ah. So um, so that's one of the services we provide for mm. churches. And so um, our churches do uh, support us. We do have two major fundraisers a year. We have a chocolate tasting. Um, and then we have a an all-church worship service, which will be coming up September 10th. Mm. Um, actually, I'm looking to see if maybe the... Um, Village would like to get a little bit on board with that since our new focus for the as a village is the music, whole music thing. And I thought, oh, well, this would be kind of cool. So we're, we're kind of trying to see if we can do that. So those are our two major fundraisers per year. And then we have um, individuals that uh, support us and then um, a couple of businesses that have been really kind as well. Wow. Well, how do people get in contact with you if they want to? Now, as far, as far as referrals, do people refer themselves? How do they refer? How do you get referrals? Sure, referrals come actually from uh, predominantly from our churches and word of mouth. Mm. So, um, so a lot of times people stop by churches looking for for help, okay. um, and then uh, the churches have cards that they can give them, and then they will call us. Oh. Um, also. Uh, it just word gets around and and mm. you know a friend will tell them we also uh work closely with uh together we hope the uh, together we hope yeah, yeah that's true too. Well, yeah. <laughs> together we, we hope <laughs> um with the Orlin township um with tinley park uh food pantry and some of mm. the other local uh organizations and they they also refer people to us wow. Lastly, how they in contact with you? What's your contact sure. info? Well, our contact information first of all our uh, if you need to mail us Maybe contribution. Uh, that's P.O. Box 7, Tinley Park, Illinois 60477. Our phone number, if you're interested in either um, volunteering or maybe doing a drive for us of personal care items or, or sheets or something like that, our phone number is 708 444 2013. And like I said, that would be the same for either volunteering or for uh, doing some kind of a drive for us. Well, thank you so much. You you're sound so like welcome. you're really doing quite a job here. You really progressed quite a bit since the last time we, we talked. We have. So, uh, it was our sixth birthday yesterday. Oh, wow. Good yeah, for you. Yeah. Well, keep up the good work. We thank need you. people like you and services like thank you. So you. keep up the good work and uh, best of luck to you. Kim Sullivan, the Executive Director of Love, Inc. Well, it was interesting talking to our first guest uh, about the Love, Inc., a uh, very outstanding service organization. And <clears throat> speaking of service organizations, our, our second guest also stressed service in Tinley Park and surrounding areas. 
And that's an organization that's been around quite a long time called the Lions Club. And we're lucky to have with us tonight the president, Ron Kulak. Hello, Ron. And a member, Carolyn Bartolotta. I hope I pronounced that right. Yes, you did. Yeah, <laughs> the Lions Club of Tinley Park. They've been around quite a while, haven't they? We have been around. Uh, this is actually our 70th anniversary year. In right Tinley now. Park? Continuous years. We had started before mm -hmm. 1948, but World War II got in the way a little bit and uh, interrupted things. And then we started up in 1948 and been going strong ever since then. Oh my goodness. Now, yeah. It's not a local organization. That's a worldwide organization. It's actually, it? it's an international organization and, and interestingly enough it was founded in Chicago oh and it celebrated its uh, centennial anniversary last year. Wow. It's been around a little while. Been around a little while. <laughs> okay, right. you got a history involved there. Yeah, we do. <laughs> wow. Well, what, what's Lions Club all about? What is your main purpose for existence and, and being? Well, Internationally and, and locally, the Lions Club was originally founded uh, to take care of individuals with sight infirmities, mm -hmm. um, difficulty with seeing, and our job was to uh, step in and help fund or provide equipment or other needs for those that were in poor, uh, with poor vision. Mm -hmm. uh, now it's grown and expanded beyond that, so we're also now addressing needs for those with uh, uh, hearing loss, and with diabetes is the newest initiative that we have, but we also, uh, each chapter or club, uh, is able to focus on individual needs for the community, and, and we do a lot of that. Wow, that sounds pretty extensive. Yeah. That's a lot of stuff to do. Oh yeah, it keeps us busy. Oh yeah, now, and you were a part of the Lioness group, and I understand that's been a change in the uh, Lions Club organization, isn't yes, it? Yes, actually the Tinley Park Club was chartered in, uh, uh, 1980, 80, 70, wait a minute, I gotta look at my cheat That's list. Okay. <laughs> I gotta do this. Uh, they were chartered in 76, February of 1976. Um, and recently, within the past year, uh, International has disbanded all the Lioness Clubs, but Tinley Park Lions Club has always been our sponsor club, and we've worked with them in many of their fundraisers and supported them as they have supported us. So it was logical. They invited yeah. us to, to join them, and we were all installed over as Tinley Park Lions members in February. Wow. And we're glad to have you. Yes. yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. The we'll, more the merrier, right? We'll be right. able to do double. Well, you know, we were, were separate organizations. Yeah. Did you meet separately, or did we, you? We did. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, we we met it in Joe's uh, okay. every third Tuesday of the month, and uh, okay. had our own fundraisers and projects. A lot of them intertwined, but okay. And we yeah. collaborate on a couple of events during the year as well, okay. like uh, during Christmas to raise money and uh, toys for the Tinley Park Food Pantry, for instance. Correct. And uh, that's still going on. Wow. Well, let's talk about some of the things you guys are sure. involved in and do. What are some of your activities and programs that are, are important to the group in Tinley? Well, we, we do have fundraising events to, to sponsor a lot of the contributions and the donations that we make to the community and to various other initiatives. And uh, one of the, one of the um, events or initiatives that we had a few years ago, and the one that we're probably most proud of, is the collaboration with the Tinley Park Park District and the Bulldogs mm -hmm. to, to build Challenger Field on 76th mm -hmm. Avenue. I didn't know and, you guys were involved Oh, with that. very much involved. We were oh. the financial arm for that, oh, actually. Oh, my. And, uh, Maybe explain a little bit what that is. Yeah. Uh, what is the Challenger Field? Well, it's, it's a ball field that's built uh, to host games that individuals with special needs can play in. And it could be physical, or it could be a site related, or maybe mobility related. They just can't uh, play a normal game. So this field was constructed so the field of activity, the level of activity, can come down to their level so they can participate. Wow. Yeah, I've heard about that. That's really pretty special and kind of helping a lot of kids uh, oh, get involved many, in sports. Very yeah. many, yeah. Oh, my goodness. So you yeah. were involved with the financial aid of that? that yes, yes. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, we're very happy to have done that, and yeah. we were approached by the Bulldogs. We didn't know this was going on until they approached us, and it sounded like it was something right in our wheelhouse mm -hmm. uh, to help the needy, especially those with infirmities. Wow. Mm -hmm. Well, congratulations. Keep it up. Thank what you. else are you guys uh, involved in? And over the years, what have you been involved in, too? Well, we're, we're still, uh, we participate with the Chicago Lighthouse. It used to be called Chicago Lighthouse for the Blind. We support them. 
uh, the Chicago Radio Information Service. It's also called CRIS. Uh, Camp Lions and Camp Quality, which are both summer camps devoted to helping kids with special needs. Uh, Together We Cope, which of course everybody knows about them locally. Uh, the Tinley Park Food Pantry, which we touched on earlier, and but it's not just during the holidays, which when we help them, it's during the entire course of the year as well. Uh, matter of fact, we'll be uh, working with them on an initiative for back to school uh, coming up uh, fairly soon. Uh, Sp- Southwest Cooperative for a special uh, education, the Illinois iBank, iBank uh, Leader Dog, um, so and uh, Helen Keller Walkathon. Um, the Boy Scouts of America Pathway to Adventure Council. Uh, we just uh, voted on some scholarships, or camperships as they call them, for those youth that are having a hard time affording being able to go to summer camp. Um, the Trim a Tree uh, event for the Chamber of Commerce is another one that we always get involved with. Oh. Um, uh, eyeglass recycling, which is something we do year round on a monthly basis. We've already donated, if I have my numbers correctly, in the last 12 months, we've donated about 2,000 pairs of eyeglasses. Oh they goodness. all get recycled oh for goodness. further use. Now yeah. Let me ask you, because I, I guess I want to bring some into you. I've got some in my car. How sure. does somebody donate glasses? How, how can we get them to you? Well, we have boxes. Uh, they're circulated throughout the village. Oh. And uh, the one area that will be easiest to remember is the Tinley Park Library. They've got a box right there, so they're a repository for that. Uh, we've got them at some of the health agencies in the area and the vision centers as well. Okay. And uh, some of the churches like Zion, uh, Zion Lutheran and uh, Trinity Lutheran Church also have boxes uh, in their narthexes. Wow, mm-hmm. beautiful. Now, have you, what, what projects have you all been involved in too? Well, basically we a lot similar ones as they have. We give scholarships out to the high schools. Uh, we have canine companions, which are dogs that help people with disabilities and as well as uh, Aunt Martha's. We had a Glenwood uh, Lioness Club. Uh, we had a president by the name of B.J. Schickner, whose pet project was Aunt Martha's. And uh, Tinley Park Club was always invited to participate. And eventually, we assisted in the, the, the baby showers, which were annual. And when she passed away, we took that over mm. because uh, the, her club had closed they, they were because of membership. But uh, that is one of our favorite projects now. And it's for, uh, we have a big baby shower for the unwed mothers. And some of them have 10, some of them have just recently had babies, bringing their babies with. And as a result, uh, what is given at the the shower, as the women have their babies, they're able to choose from these gifts. So that's one of our favorite projects. And we've done a card and bunco wow. as a fundraiser. Uh, we've done a candlelight bowl. Oh my goodness. And uh, uh, we've done bake sales for different things like when they have a fundraiser for like a pancake day or mm-hmm. even uh, the brewery, the Hailstorm mm-hmm. Brewery thing. Okay. We'll have a bake sale along with that. Yeah, talk about that. You got something coming up uh, in the fall? That... Well, we have two events coming in the fall. The first one, I believe, is in September for the Aunt Martha's, Aunt right? Martha's, right. Mm-hmm. And is that local? It's held locally, right? Right. Yes, okay. it is. Yeah. And we are also going to be holding a, kind of a fun event, a mixer, uh, for anybody who wants to come to Hailstorm Brewery on November the 4th, which is a Sunday. And uh, of course, to, to see the game of the day, whatever that is. Uh, last year was the Bears Packers. against the Packers, Packers. so oh, that was a, <laughs> was a well-attended event. But all the money raised at that event goes into help into a pool to help fund our different initiatives during the course of the year, especially the scholarships. Uh, that's something now that we're able to expand with the organizations merging together. Uh, we're able now to sponsor two scholarships each at Andrew High School, Tinley Park High School, and Lincoln Way East. Oh, my goodness. For Tinley Park residents. Wow. Yeah. You guys are active. That's a lot yeah. of stuff. How many members have you got in your club right now? Well, between with the merged organization, now we have between 25 and 30 okay. active members. Yeah. And that you do all those things with 25 or 30 yeah. people? We're looking for more. We'd like to do more. Okay, what does it more take? More to marry. What would it take <laughs> for somebody to join? How would they uh, join, and uh, where would they contact? Well, they they can contact me. And again, uh, my the best way to reach me is on my phone. The cell phone is 708 738 
We're also uh, on Facebook. So the Tinley Park Lions Club can be found on Facebook and uh, you can get some information that way as well. Okay. Wow. Well, uh, join up. Uh, they could use some yeah, more help. We, it sounds right. like you got quite it's an active. It's a good organization. Uh, oh, it's a great organization. Yeah. And we yeah. meet on the third Tuesday yeah. of the month. Okay. And we meet at the Station Pub and Eatery right on South Street, a block east of the uh, uh, Oak Park Avenue train station. Right in the, okay, down there. Okay. Right. And it used yeah. to be called... Um, I think that was... Labor, was it Lavery's or... Lubies. Lubies, yes. And before Lubies. that, Lavery's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Then, right. yeah. It's had a few changes. <laughs> okay. So they've, yeah. been, they've been very gracious hosts uh, to us, and uh, that's our home now for our, our regular meetings. Okay. Third Tuesday of every month, and we meet from 7 to about 8.30. Wow. Now, is most of your activities uh, fundraising, or do you actually get out physically and do some of these things on, uh, well, on we're, site? We're looking to do more of the physical ev events where we can be hands-on, uh, maybe working on park benches or uh, other improvements for maybe a playground. And uh, we're going to be talking to the park district about what items, what projects might be uh, at our disposal that we can handle. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, it sounds like you've had a lot. I don't know how yeah, much more, yeah. how much less you can handle. Oh yeah. Well, we, whatever we do, we we uh, we have a candy drive in the fall okay. uh, at at the two stations here in town, and uh, and then we sell candy. You know, oh, also supplement our immense. funds too. Yeah. Now, yeah. when is that usually? Uh, it's usually at the end of October. Okay. Uh, just before Halloween. Okay. Like in the middle of the month. <laughs> so you're doing the giving out of candy then, right? Exactly right. right. Exactly. Oh my goodness. Right. Well, it sounds like you got a lot of things going uh, for your organization. Any big things coming up, or? That... Well, the biggest event that we have will probably be the Hailstorm Brewery event. Oh, yeah. Okay. And uh, we've got a lot of little projects that are going on. Nothing real major, like with the Challenger Field. Mm -hmm. And um, if, if certain, certainly, if there was another group that had. A sponsorship they were in need of that oh. would be of that size uh, we're willing to take a look at it and talk to them about a, some type of a collaborative effort oh so yeah because uh, you joined up with the Bulldogs and Park sure, so exactly. or other groups that would like to get involved right. with something so we're all ears and all eyes and we just though any anything somebody wants to suggest to us we're very open mm -hmm. uh, again our focus has always been kind of uh, medical related okay. uh, treating health issues for individuals but we're trying to expand more to the local community now and to treat in, in localized needs uh, for youth and adults both. Wow. Well, one last thing quickly. What's the, where do they, who do they contact and what's the phone number again? Again, Ron Kulak at 708-738-1197 or you can go to us and look us up on Facebook. Wow. Well, thanks for coming, Ron You're and welcome. Carolyn. I Thank appreciate you. it. You've Our got pleasure. a tremendous organization going. Uh, the Lions Club of Tinley Park. Tremendously active group doing a lot of good things in Tinley. Thanks again for watching Discover Tinley, and we'll see you next month.